Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris, and what I'd like to talk about real quick is uh, something known as um, dead space, particularly something uh, called physiological dead space. So let's go ahead and begin real quick. Let me go ahead and just pull this up. All right. So uh, let's just make sure we're familiarized with the the core co concepts, uh, the foundational concepts before adding on new stuff. So. Um, everybody at this point in uh, your uh, career as a respiratory student, um, you know that you're in the uh, past the uh, the halfway mark in the second the second semester. You should be aware of um, something known as tidal volume, or what we um, often uh, symbolize tidal volume with VT. Um, that equals the tidal volume, or TV. Why why we don't say TV instead of VT? Um, who knows? But VT tends to be the uh, pretty the standard um, um, way that we symbolize tidal volume. We know tidal volume is basically just a normal breath. Um, that normal breath is is somewhere around five to seven uh, milliliters per kilogram in an adult patient. Okay, and that is not on a ventilator. That is just a normal physiological breath. And we know um, that when we put somebody on a ventilator, um, depending on their condition, obviously there there are a lot of things that go into it. But uh, you can say you know right around approximately um, 10 milliliters per kilogram tends to be a good place to start at if you don't have any major underlying pulmonary pathology. Okay, that's your tidal volume, and we also know um, that F is the frequency or the respiratory rate and this can be you know our patient uh, breathing spontaneously or it can be a setting um, on the on the ventilator as well so f is frequency and then there's a concept known as minute ventilation or ve okay ve equals uh, minute ventilation and at this point we should know how to calculate uh, the VE or the minute ventilation is just the amount of air that goes in and out of the lungs uh, per minute. And the minute ventilation is simply um, the tidal volume multiplied by the respiratory rate. If I'm taking, let's say, a 500, okay, I'm taking a tidal volume, a VT, of uh, 500 milliliters at a rate, a frequency of 10 breaths per minute. Well, I need only multiply 500, okay, 500 times 10, all right, 500 milliliters of breath, 10 breaths a minute, that equals 5,000, okay, that's 5,000 milliliters or 5 liters per minute, okay. And we would say that our VE, our minute ventilation, is five liters of air going in out of our lungs per minute. Okay, so this that should just be some basic review up until this point. Um, just the basic review of some basic calculations that you had to do in your first semester as students. But now that everybody's on the same page, what I want to do is I want to add a little something to that um, concept of VE. And that is something known as alveolar minute ventilation. Okay. Now to understand alveolar minute ventilation, what we have to do is we have to understand a little bit about the lungs and we should know at this point. Uh, so I'm going to attempt uh, to draw some lungs here. I'm going to draw my airway. Okay, Here's my upper airway. Um, there's a carina, my lower airway. And I've got the, the lungs here, the right and left lung. Um, okay. So pretty horrible drawing of a lung, but there you have it. And we know that I have the, the bronchi, and then the bronchi branch out into the bronchioles, and eventually after 23 generations or so, I get down to um, the alveoli themselves right here. And the alveoli is where I actually have gas exchange. Now, when I have a, let's say I have a tidal volume of 500 milliliters, okay? I'm taking a 500 milliliter breath. Um, we know that not all of that breath is going to make it into the alveoli, okay? Because I have all of this space here, what are called the conducting airways. So if these are little particles of air, of gas. Um, those airways are going to have particles in them, 
and I'm not going to have any gas exchange in these larger airways. I really don't have gas exchange until I get down to the level of the alveoli. Okay. So when I take a breath, not all of that 500 milliliters, some of that 500 milliliters is going to end up in the, in the uh, upper airway, the trachea, uh, the main stem bronchi, um, the bronchioles, and so on and so forth. And only part of it is going to actually make its way into the alveoli themselves. And um, so with that said, not um, when we calculate our minute ventilation, our 5 liters a minute, not all of that is, is actually going to be uh, ventilating the alveoli. I'm going to have some, some of that air is going to be in the, um, in the uh, conducting airways um, where I don't have any um, exchange of gas. And that space is known as physiological dead space. So what I need to do to calculate alveolar minute ventilation is I need to subtract the dead space from that. How do I do that? Well, there's a general rule of thumb, and the general rule of thumb is this, that um, my dead space, my physiological dead space, and I'll say that's VD, my physiological dead space, that is dead space that is in the airways themselves. There's a different type of dead space called mechanical dead space, and that's the ventilator circuit and so on and so forth, adds uh, ET tube and whatnot, HMEs add dead space. We'll talk about that later on. But physiological dead space in the non-conducting airways in, in a normal person equals about one milliliter per pound of ideal body weight, okay? Per pound of ideal body weight, okay? So we have to know the patient's ideal body weight, not their actual body weight. That's something very important to know, ideal body weight. Okay. So let's say that I have a 500 breath, and let's just say that I um, weigh 150 pounds. I don't actually weigh that. I weigh quite a bit more than that, um, uh, 50 or 60 more than that. But uh, let's just say it's 150. Well, 150 times 1, right, in 1 milli per pound is just 150 milliliters. So what I need to do is I need to subtract 150 from 500, okay? So I subtract 150 from that. All right, that's zero. Uh, let's see, make that a four. Add the 10 over here, that's five. And that's 350. So only 350 milliliters of that 500 milliliter breath actually make it to the alveoli. Um, and what I can do is, is now that I have this, I can multiply, instead of the 500 being multiplied by the rate, um, I can multiply 350 by the respiratory rate. And let's just keep the rate at 10. So 350 uh, times 10 is uh, 3,500 milliliters or 3.5 liters per minute. Okay? So my minute ventilation. If with a tidal volume of 500, and maybe I'll just write that here, 500, and a respiratory rate of 10, my, my normal minute ventilation is uh, 5 liters per minute, but when I take into consideration physiological dead space and that I have um, this, this dead space here, I'm in the non-conducting airways, um, my actual alveolar minute ventilation, okay, which is different now that we now from minute ventilation, my alveolar minute ventilation, is 3.5 liters per minute. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. Hopefully um, that helps and that makes sense when we talk about alveolar minute ventilation.